But what do you really want? You got to distill your intent. Not about your surface values and beliefs. It's not really about your values. It's really not about your beliefs because those are the things that are in conflict, right? When you you know think about what you really want, what you're praying for, but it's more about your core values and your core beliefs. What's most important and most valuable to you? A lot of things have value, right? Your freedom to go and come as you please. This is an example. Your freedom to be with whoever you want to be with and date and fly all over the world or whatever, fly, make trips, hang out, whatever, when nobody asks you questions. That may be a desire, right? That may be a value for you. But it may not be your core value. Your core value is kingdom first, maybe. Your core value is family first, children first. See? So you have to come to understand what your core is and what's most valuable instead of surface level uh, secondary values and desires. So that's another reason why prayers aren't answered per se. There's conflict and you're not in alignment with your core values and beliefs. So by now you should have the wisdom to know or be very suspect that God is not all good. Meaning God has no problem unleashing un unpleasant events and circumstances into your life. God has no problem removing his protection from your ass. You pretty much look at the state of the world, right? You can pretty much see what's happening with children being abducted, people not eating, all types of crazy diseases. We just came out of the pandemic. Where was God? You should be kind of waking up to the fact that it can't, he can't be all good quote unquote, because we know everything is about agreeable and disagreeable. You can't be all just agreeable. Just look at the story of Noah. Just look at the story of Noah. <laughs> God said, you know what? I'm going to destroy man upon the face of the earth. Many times prophets had to plead with God, please don't kill everybody. Can you save some goats and, and birds? And can you save some of us? All right, but everybody else gonna die. Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. Angels coming down, y'all better get up out of here. God is about to destroy y'all, y'all nasty. <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah. Please, can you gather, if we can find just one righteous person, same story as Noah pretty much. Is anybody here pure of heart and has inner divine beauty? Would you have mercy? God will destroy a city and tell your behind, you better not even look back or I'm killing you. People running out of the burning city, somebody felt a certain type of way, turned back, God turned them into a pillar of salt. Some people are saying, Nazir, that's mythology. Yes, it, it's a mythology but it's also true. It's speaking to metaphysical, spiritual concepts. No, a person wasn't turned into a physical pillar of salt. I hope you don't think that, but the person was locked. The person became petrified and, became, and stopped on a certain level of development because they keep looking back to their past. Doesn't matter as mythology or not. So if I tell you it was real, does that change the story? If I tell you it was, no, it was made up, does that change the story? The learning lesson, the principle of the matter? Absolutely not. You're not supposed to look back. See, this is why your eyes are in your face, not in the back of your damn head. God telling you, look forward. Look forward. God is not just good. 
God is not just agreeable. Just look at Revelation. Who's unleashing vials on the earth that's causing boils to erupt from man's skin, humanity's skin? They're starting to cry out with all these diseases. So much so that it is written that men will cry out to God, please, please kill me, let me die. And death will flee from you. So telling you, God is willing to torture you to the extent that he won't even let you die. Don't tell me God is all good and agreeable. Right here in the book, I don't want that. Who wants that? One third of the earth seas turn to blood. One third of the fresh water turn to blood. The great master teacher, Jesus said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, right? The rod is what you use to beat and spank a child. Spoil, spare the rod, spoil the child. God ain't no different. He's spanky with that rod. Thy rod and thy staff, the staff is the leadership. The staff is, is the knowledge and, and, and showing you the right way, pointing you in the right direction. But thy rod and thy staff, they comfort you. You need both. Right? Anybody has children, you know that. It's not all pretty, and beautiful, and warm and fuzzy. <laughs> but the wisdom of the Most High is knowing when to be warm and inviting, just like God. He's warm and inviting and bless you beyond your wildest dreams. Right? But get on his bad side. He could be cold brutal and ruthless you gotta learn that wisdom there's a time for cold brutal and ruthlessness you hear that thunder that's shango you hear the thunder there's a time for it there's a time to cancel people cut people off christian dogma cripples many of you because it was twisted and contorted for the uh, intentions of people who wanted to make slaves and want to make a docile population. So of course, they're just gonna tell you the warm and fuzzy, but no, it's not all about that. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta send people on to Jesus, <laughs> right? People talk about getting spiritual, put a shotgun to your head, you'll be spiritual faster than a mug. Huh? You want to meet Jesus? This is your Jesus invitation. Huh? Send you right back to the manufacturer. There's something wrong with this one, God. You got to fix him. Let's send him back to the Father. There's a time for it. There ain't nothing wrong with it. It's just as righteous and good, quote unquote, as warm and inviting. It just depends on what nature is bringing and what the circumstances call for. But Christian doctrine, specifically, cripples many people because it was used to make docile slaves. So they taught a one-sided doctrine that suited the slave master's needs. For you to take your abuse and your rape and your torture and your degradation with a smile and go back humming, picking that cotton. Mm, because I'm, I'm going to go to heaven after this. <laughs> right? <clears throat> You think the slave master is going to teach you something that's really going to set you free? That's old stuff. Malcolm X taught that. <laughs> old. That's 80-year-old information. Step up to your power. The mere fact.